So hi everybody, um, I'm so excited to uh, interview my friend Marlena today because she's agreed to come and talk about her hormonal journey because like, as women we all have that experience where our hormones are going up and down. And one of the things I kind of realized when I was writing the book is so much of what we experience is natural. It really is um, just part of being a woman. I mean, men have hormones too, but we, we seem to have a bigger, you know, a, a bigger impact on us as women. And um, so in my new book, you know, which uh, very well, which is a story about um, a woman who is going through into menopause and she has two daughters, one of which is um, experiencing PMDD, which is a very, very strong version of PMS. And another um, of her daughters is having postpartum depression, or at least that's the diagnosis she's been given. And I, I invited Marlene to come and talk to us about that because having had a child herself, she's got some really powerful um, insights to share about postpartum. So maybe mm -hmm. you could share a little bit about what you were telling me. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. Um, I realized a few months ago uh, around the feeling when I'm really connected to someone, Mm -hmm. I or to to a group of people um I I start to cry mm -hmm. it just happens <laughs> and the first thing uh, was I was kind of uh, it struck me it was like oh something is really really wrong here I'm crying what's happening here I'm I so my interpretation of, of what was happening with my body was mm -hmm. a negative one right mm -hmm. and a few days later, I realized that's not what actually happened because I was on the street driving my car. Something happened. A person had to wait for me to pass. And he was really patient and waited. And and, and then when I could go off, um, I signed him uh, my, that I'm grateful. And he looked at me and I looked at him and it was instant connection. It was so deep. It was so beautiful. I drove out with my car on the street and I started to cry again. And I realized, wow, that's not even close to the <laughs> to the other situation mm -hmm. because the feeling was the same. So I realized, wow, my body reacts uh, when I feel really connected, really close to someone. My body reacts with having tears, tearing up. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks after that, like not long ago, I thought about um, when I had my first child mm -hmm. and th the moment she was born, I, I started to cry. Wow. I started to cry. But back then, it's like 20 years ago, I thought that's a bad thing. Wow. Crying means something is wrong. Crying means whatever. I'm insecure. I'm not a good mother. I'm whatever. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see it because it wasn't in my thinking mm -hmm. that crying could be a sign of just feeling completely closed, mm -hmm. completely connected, like moved, yeah. like really moved by mm -hmm. what I experienced. Mm -hmm. And so I got it all wrong. I became very worried about my what I was feeling, that this couldn't be normal. I should be happy. I should be laughing, smiling all the time. <clears throat> and that wasn't what, ha what, what was happening. And then, you know, you have a child. She's not always sleeping that well. Like, yeah. <laughs> you nurture the child. You, you, I had a lot of expectation towards myself, how I have to move on, like, cleaning all the stuff, always perfect. Mm -hmm. And having that child doing all, all like I do it the first time, but perfect, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that means, <laughs> made up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then that feeling of uh, looking at her and crying, it just, I, I had a really big mess in my head about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now uh, looking at it again, I see, wow, I just feel so connected. Wow. That is amazing because it changes everything, right? Yeah. Like your interpretation of the natural way as a mother, you were reacting to your baby, mm. how 
you know, we could see that as a problem or something wrong. In fact, when when my book was being edited, mm. um, the the editor of um, Wonderful Woman, she had just had a baby. Oh and, wow! Yeah, she she was having the baby as I was finishing writing it, and um, <laughs> and so when when she was um, editing. I remember, you know, she's very professional, you know, just writing about the grammar and my punctuation and my bad spelling. And um, <laughs> and then she put in a, a, a little message and she said, I'm just realizing maybe it's not postpartum depression. It's just anxious thinking. Mm -hmm. And just that little shift in perception mm -hmm. of something can can change your world, because mm -hmm. If we put a label on it like postpartum depression, then it has a heaviness to it, and there's some it implies there's something yeah. wrong, something wrong mm -hmm. with us, mm -hmm. and then then we need fixing, and we got to mm -hmm. change it, and then that starts a whole nother stressful journey of you know fixing and changing something we think is wrong. Mm -hmm. But but what you just described is so simple, just seeing it slightly differently, a different interpretation, mm -hmm. that there's nothing wrong with you. In fact, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. I yeah. love that. Yeah, I said it's 20 years ago, but I still feel my memory changes because I see it differently now. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, that was such a, a heavy time. And mm -hmm. oh, no, <laughs> it was great. I mean, <laughs> it was, wow, I, I felt connected. I felt so in sync with my little girl. Mm -hmm. that I just teared up wow and and I love what you said about the driving too because that seems like such a random situation how can you feel mm -hmm. connected to another, someone else in another yeah. car on the street but when you were telling that story I remembered um, a time when I I was visiting a friend and um, my friend's husband had gone to great lengths to prepare some stuff for our meal Mm -hmm. And he'd made the individual things because different people around the table had different, you know, uh, food allergies or, you know, preferences. And he'd, in he'd individually made a salad for each person. And, you know, and he'd done it with such wow. kindness. Mm -hmm. And I remember the next day, because I stayed with him for a weekend in New York. And, and I said to him, I said, thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly felt this surge of emotion. Yeah. And you know, he's just a regular guy. He's my friend's husband, you know, and, and for a second, I we kind of caught each other's eye and it was a bit, you know, I didn't want to be inappropriate, but I just felt, I felt gratitude. Yeah. I've never felt gratitude before. It was a word. It was, you know, some sentences. It's a birthday card, but to actually feel gratitude, it was actually a little bit um, overwhelming because yeah. I couldn't, wasn't quite sure how to deal with it. And then it passed and it was okay. And since then, you know, if I'm reading something, you know, sometimes even when I read a kid, a, a book, you know, like bedtime or something, and, and I could tear up and it's like, and yeah. now I just kind of got used to it because you're right, it's connection. Mm -hmm. When we feel connected, even to someone like a stranger on the street or or mm -hmm. someone we don't know so well. Um, I think I was always taught to be frightened of those kind of feelings mm -hmm. and, and yeah. knowing that they're safe. And they're just moving through and they're just showing that we're awake and we're, you know, in the moment. It's a beautiful thing to, mm -hmm. to embrace it. It's, it's really okay. I don't have to go searching for them. They just come up when we're, when we're present and living life. And, um, and I kind of had the same kind of experience when I was going through menopause, you know, mm -hmm. my perimenopause lasted for, you know, probably over 10 years. And I, a lot of the time I didn't know what was happening um, and so when I would get, you know, um, the brain fog or the fatigue or, um, you know, the, the hot flushes and stuff, at first it was really frightening because I, you know, I, I don't have any sisters. My mother had passed away. I didn't really have any input. So um, tell me a little bit about your experience with that. How, how did you feel when you were going through it? Um, interestingly, it didn't bother me that much. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think... I out of that idea that something is wrong with my female body, like mm -hmm. uh, it has to f be fixed. But honestly, I had I had a lot of other issues that I'm I was chasing. <laughs> like maybe I just <laughs> thought it's like something like that. So I didn't attach it that much to to menopause, or I had I didn't have have a lot of thinking around it I had a lot of I had 
like flushes uh, during the night or like this sweating and stuff. But mm -hmm. only now and then I had mm, nights where I didn't sleep not even an hour and got up, had to to go to the hospital and work like nine hours, 10 mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. And it still worked. I I still function like really this was surprising as well <laughs> I mean wow I'm still <laughs> really good <laughs> it's it's okay so mm -hmm. yeah I think it wasn't really a thing to, for me you know I think that's really important to know because it was a thing for me and so mm -hmm. therefore my overreaction to it mm -hmm. caused the symptoms to be even more severe I think I mean, I, I'm mm. not a doctor, so I, I'm just going to go based on my own experience and from other women I've spoken to. When we kind of, I don't want to say overreact because that always sounds um, unkind, but I think sometimes we can be hyper reactive to mm -hmm. our symptoms, which are natural and normal because it's a, you know, a, a cycle we're going through it, you know, mm -hmm. every woman goes through it, you know, eventually. But when when I was overreacting, it was like making my symptoms even more louder. You know, it's mm, like the body started yeah. screaming at me even more, um, which I think happens with chronic pain and a lot of physical issues. When we have a reaction, then it kind of sends a message to the brain that we're not safe. And then the brain kind of goes into crisis mode and survival mode, and then that will escalate the symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, so I, So you're saying because you didn't have a big reaction to it and you just kind of you know dealt with it handled it it sounds like that's why your symptoms were much less which is such mm -hmm. hope and good news for women mm -hmm. so if anybody's listening um the message I always want to share is like the less you react to it the the easier it's going to be and so it's like you're you're the great example of of seeing how this understanding can um eliminate a lot of the suffering mm -hmm that many yeah. of us go through by just kind of downgrading the reaction. And that's, that's what's happened with my pain. And it, I think it eventually happened with mm -hmm. my medical symptoms as I, it kind of coincided with me coming across the three principles and mm -hmm. my, my symptoms pretty much melted away once I stopped over, you know, reacting. Yeah, to yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's also, I think what helped me or what help what what is helpful for me to everything that ha that is happening is um to remind me that I actually don't really know what I think I know. <laughs> what if it's the opposite? What if what we look at as a weakness in women is actually our strength, like our power? Yeah. Being able to to surf cycles surf waves mm -hmm. this is a great power yeah this is nothing weak that that this is not weakness mm -hmm. it's the opposite and what if only we think it's a weakness is the problem <laughs> like really <laughs> and and also i mean i know that there are cultures like societies who where women don't have any of these symptoms like it's not even right. it's not a topic at all right. I, I mean this is interesting that opens up something it's like oh maybe we don't have to <laughs> yeah because I remember when my mother was you know I'm, I'm guessing she was going through menopause because she didn't discuss it with me I was young um I remember she got kind of forgetful she would say oh my mind is like a sieve <laughs> she, mm. she, we, we had this family joke where she would write a shopping list and then we'd go to the supermarket and we'd say mom what's on the shopping list she's yeah. like the list is still at home on the kitchen yeah. <laughs> and she would do that every time and it just kind of became a family joke um, but mm. but she I don't remember her you know being debilitated by anything mm. she just kind of got on with it and I think that's kind of you know my mother's generation you know but also I think um there was less focus and attention on mm. you know, on it so therefore there wasn't so many stories in around it and so they just kind of got on with it um and mm. and I see now that that's such a powerful um it's not a it's not a disability it's not mm. it's not something 
it's not a thing even Mm. it's it's we we go through it and and I've learned to um you know accept it mm. and and the more I'm okay with it the less yeah. it has to interfere with my life and my and my health and um yeah. and of course some women do have you know do have a tough time with you know there are things that need medical attention I don't want to mm. dismiss anybody's suffering because there are times when there are things that need you know um, a doctor's attention but most of the time in, in my experience of talking to a lot of women now is that um, it can be like downgraded, you know, like the storm doesn't have to be um, ruin our lives. And, mm. you know, this, this is, this has been a great insight and a great help to, you know, a lot of people or women already. Yeah. Yeah. And what if it's really true that what we experience is thinking or thought like in the moment? Mm hmm. Yeah. really really only this yeah like what if we could just be with what is it was what is happening in our bodies with our bodies like with thoughts and feelings you've just reminded me that i i put um i also put this in the book somebody else's quote where she was telling me that her view of a hot flush for example mm -hmm. is her body doing a cleansing yeah and i mean that sounds a little bit earth mothery for me like I, I'm not I'm not that kind of person but as soon as she said that I felt mm -hmm. a different perception of what yeah. my body was doing mm -hmm. it and I actually didn't I remember at the time I was still having maybe hot flushes you know like maybe one or two a day which is not a lot and I didn't have any for about two weeks after mm. that and now I still I just get them occasionally and it's not a big deal um and it was just seeing it slightly differently so that was a change in my thinking. Like you're saying, mm. it's like my thinking changed. Now my body was still doing the same thing. It's still, I'm sure the, you know, hormone levels were still going up and down like they were, but my experience, my thinking about it completely changed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're offering here. You mm -hmm. know, um, we're offering that there a new perspective and a new understanding of this can, can change mm -hmm. your experience of what is basically a natural and normal process in life. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's such a great conversation. And mm. I hope this is really you know helpful to other women who you mm. know may be suffering or struggling with this because you know there's there there is I mean it's good that it's becoming more of an accepted conversation, but I think you know we we don't have to we're not ill. There's nothing mm. with us, we're not broken. <clears throat> it's just something that you know that we're, we're a phase that we're going through, a part of life, natural. Mm. Um, and being okay with what is is, is really freedom mm. so I really appreciate your time and your coming and sharing your stories And uh, thank you so much Hannah thank you <laughs> okay bye bye